you're looking at the most mathematically and scientifically perfect pecan pie ever made. Now this may be controversial, but I think pecan pie is the best pie on the entire Thanksgiving table. So in my quest to create the best pecan pie recipe on the internet, I combined the top 10 recipes on YouTube, averaged out their ingredients, techniques, and fancy flourishes to make one average recipe. The videos come all the way from the American South to Eastern Asia, and the creators ranged from YouTube superstars all the way to warm-hearted grandmas who accidentally blew up while they were recording family recipes to share with their kids. We love you, Miss Brenda D. So armed with the tips and tricks from all these recipes, I can officially say I've created the most average best pecan pie. The literal and figurative base for any good pecan pie is gonna be the crust. And I'm happy to say that every single recipe in the top 10 used a homemade crust. Good job, YouTube. You should be proud. But unfortunately, not every video gave the recipe for their crust. So I was just gonna average out the six videos that did and call it a day. But then I remembered, this series is about me putting in the work to combine 10 complete recipes so that you can spend your time eating pie and watching my other videos. So please believe I hunted down the other recipes, everyone except for Miss Brenda D, who's just keeping her as a family secret. So I subbed in the top pie crust recipe on YouTube, and here's what we ended up with. 244 grams all-purpose flour, 29 grams of sugar, three grams of salt, 167 grams of cold cubed butter, and 55 grams of ice water. There's nothing too shocking here, but the beauty of combining 10 different recipes is you get a variety of secret ingredients. Chef Steps, which can always be counted on to have the fanciest recipe, used a low protein flour, so I added 25 grams of pastry flour. There were five total eggs used in these recipes, so that came out to a half an egg. But don't go making a tiny half egg omelet yet because we will use the other half in the filling. And the final ingredient was two grams of apple cider vinegar. At first, this dough was a bit grainy, but after resting half an hour, it stuck together nicely and rolled out perfectly to cover a nine inch pan. Now, it's worth mentioning that pecan pie is a very wet pie. And for that reason, a lot of recipes will pre-bake or blind bake the crust. In our list, half the recipes called for a blind bake, and of those, half used pie weights. So accounting for all of that, we ended up with a blind bake at 388F 198C for four minutes and 42 seconds with pie weights and four minutes and 28 seconds without. And that's the most average best pie crust. But now for the fun part, let's fill her up. The average filling used three and a half eggs, 49 grams of maple syrup, 128 grams of light corn syrup, and 54 grams of dark corn syrup. With all that corn, a slice of this pie is basically a serving of vegetables. 147 grams brown sugar, two grams of salt, 50 grams white sugar, three grams of vanilla extract, 26 grams of milk, six grams of flour, and six grams of bourbon. Oh yeah, and Chef Steps kept up their fancy streak and used a vanilla pod, so we put in a tenth of a vanilla pod. Now you may have noticed that there's a bunch of unmelted butter floating around in my filling, so maybe I forgot to put melted butter and just put softened butter instead, or maybe life is just full of happy accidents, and this gave me the excuse I needed to preheat the filling before adding the pecans. Anyway, a few recipes actually did heat up their filling before adding it to the pecans, so this worked out perfectly. So I put the filling over a pot of boiling water and heated it just until the butter was melted before pouring it over the pecans. Now, let's talk about these pecans, because they were a little nuts. Two recipes called for toasted pecans, and eight called for raw pecans. Four recipes called for the nuts to be halved. Four called for them to be roughly chopped. Two recipes called for them to be finely diced. So with all this information, I took the 216 gram total average and divided it into 86 grams of raw halves, 86 grams of raw roughly chopped, and 44 grams of toasted finely diced. It seems like a lot, but this was nowhere near as complicated as the chocolate chips were in the most average best chocolate chip recipe. Now this part is optional because it was a 5-5 pie, but I chose to decorate the top of the pie with the prettiest pecan halves. Cook the pie at 425F 218C for one and a half minutes, then drop the oven to 350F 175C and cook for 50 more minutes. It was a Thanksgiving miracle that this pie came out so well the first time. And I can honestly tell you, and this is not just the math talking, this was the best pecan pie I've ever had.